first and foremost, before we start this venomous video, I want to drop a little disclaimer saying that I don't condone handling of Gila's and Beaded's by anyone. Uh, Sydney, oh, Miri? Either way. Yes, okay. Yep. Uh, Miri and I are both trained venomous handlers and are going to handle with care for the purpose of educating you guys today. Warning. The decision to begin keeping medically significant venomous should be made with deliberation, respect for the animals, and consideration for the community. A handler should acquire high quality tools to enable safer handling as well as a circumferential compression device just in case of a bite. We purchase our hooks, tongs, and venom lock from tongs.com. A keeper should be mindful. Requirements of care are more extensive in comparison to keeping non-venomous, and I do not condone handling by those who are not physically able-bodied, adequately experienced, clear of mind, or otherwise impaired. Furthermore, I recommend mentoring under a licensed venomous keeper for a minimum of 2,000 hours before attempting the act on your own, which many states require. Additionally, do not attempt to interact with any dangerous animals without an assistant, as this could potentially result in your death and enact a ripple of social and legal ramifications in your state and federal legislature. Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my quarantine room. I have a couple of new heliderms, and so this is one of my cute little baby Gila's that's about a three-year-old that I recently brought home. These are venomous, obviously. So there's two main species of venomous lizards in the world, although they are discussing whether or not Komodo dragons and even some iguanids are venomous. I don't know that they've decided on that but the Gila monster and the beaded lizard. Previously, there were two scientifically recognized subspecies that they have now reclassified as one species. So this is the one that would have been previously called the banded, and it is really beautiful. This one has nice weight on it. You can tell the tail's got some thickness to it, and they definitely get some more girth on them as they get to become healthier adults. Nice fat belly and tubby little arms. You definitely want to be careful. They have an anticoagulant venom and so if it bites you it is gonna hurt and it's going to bleed a lot. I like it when they do the little proper lady thing. <laughs> Very cute. Grab them behind the head and I'll get out one of, well Z. I only got one new beaded. So one thing you will notice with these lizards is that they are pretty much always in shed somewhere. These ones definitely have a much stronger jaw and one that I handle with a little more care because they're stronger. This is also a young animal, maybe a two or three year old. And you can see he's flicking his tongue and so he's checking out his environment. So they do this little twisting thing ultimately trying to twist out of your hands so they can reach around and latch onto you. And that is a defensive mechanism. I know this seems a little bit mean, but it's perfectly safe. Oh, are you gonna get me? So you can see they have a very interesting mouth. I'm trying to get them to open up again. This one is in kind of a lean stage right now. They definitely get a lot more girth on them as they get older. And as I said, this one is still very much an adolescent. They definitely have a much more textured scale or a beaded scale, as you would assume. And it's very interesting. They're very neat to feel. In captivity, they do need their nails trimmed unless they're in a large naturalistic enclosure with a lot of sand and rocks that they're frequently walking over. But in captivity, they don't necessarily forage or hunt for food. They're just gonna kinda chill out until they get fed. 
So usually you do have to trim their nails or they kind of turn and get really long and they scratch you too. These animals, as well as some others, came from one of my favorite breeders. He's a big colubrid guy and one that I highly respect and so I'm very proud to have these beautiful animals in my collection. This is the species Horridum Horridum and very cool animals. Oh yeah, I love having Heloderma. So this is one of my adult females. So this is the other, what was previously considered subspecies, the reticulate. And so you can see the difference between them. Uh, the easiest way to basically think about it is that they're essentially kind of opposite colors, in my opinion. This one is kind of black with orange or peachy stripes, and that one kind of looks like a peach or a tangerine animal with black stripes or markings. So really beautiful. This lady's been in East Texas in a breeding program for a little while, and I just got her and my other large female back. So thank you to the transporter for bringing them here. And as you can see, she's in shed as well, as they often are, because they just always shed because they grow. And they shed in patches, unlike snakes that kind of ideally shed in one piece. So this is a nice, healthy female here. So big thanks to the guys that were taking care of her while she was off being bred. And now it's my turn to reproduce from her. So. <laughs> Tell us a fun fact about Gila's that you know. So I just found out that the bumps that you see on the skull itself, mm -hmm. or on the head mm -hmm. of these animals, are actually on the skull. Wow. The, all those little bumps are actually parts of the skull itself, which is pretty freaking neat. I don't That's... know of any other skulls that I are beaded up or anything like that. They're all smooth, so. I've never seen a Gila skull before. Not without all that on top of it. <laughs> all right, what do you guys think? They're cool. They still make me nervous, but they're cool. These are all, these are all, always have been one of my favorites, for sure. They're very rare to see with a lot of people, so yeah. being able to come here and work with them with you guys is amazing. Awesome. Well, they I think they're cuties. All right, definitely drop your Gila and beaded lizard questions below. Comment below what your favorite hell <laughs> hell. <laughs> Comment below what your favorite heloderma is and we we'll see you guys next time.